Hey, it's Harker from Play. And today we're gonna to talk about timer triggers in Interactions 2.0. So a timer trigger is used to fire an action or a set of actions for a given number of times, which you can set in this repeat property of the timer trigger. And the, all of those firings will be separated by a given interval, which you can set using the interval property of the timer trigger. Lastly, we also have the auto start property that will make this timer automatically start on page enter but you can also turn this off and use a start timer action, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. But for now, I'll leave auto start on. By default, the interval is 0.1 seconds and we'll repeat it one time, but you can change these values, which we'll do right now. So we'll change the interval to one second and we'll change repeat to let's say 10 times. So basically this is gonna fire the resulting actions 10 times, one second apart. So one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. Now you can see we had already added this timer trigger in this video, but if you wanted to add a trigger, this timer trigger, it's the same way you'd add any other triggers, either using the interactions panel over here or using the quick add menu by pressing A or clicking on this purple plus sign. So we have this timer trigger here. And what we're gonna do is use this timer trigger to count up the second timer that I have on my phone right now. So you can see I have two text elements, one that we're gonna count up with and the other one that just sets seconds for the unit. So on this timer trigger, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add a set variable action. So I'm gonna search that in the quick add menu and add it to my page. Now the variable that I wanna set is called count and I've created this in the variables panel. I'm using a page variable because I don't need to access this count variable anywhere else in my project. I only need it on this page. So by default, this count variables it's a number value, or sorry, it's a number variable, and its value is zero. So it starts at zero. So I'm gonna go into this set variable action, and I'm gonna set the variable to be count. And then for the value, in this expression editor here, I'm gonna say count. So I'm gonna use that variable, and I'm gonna add one to it. So basically every time this timer triggers, it's going to add one to the count. So the first will be zero, and then one, two, three, and four. So that's our count. Now to display this count, we're gonna set it as a text element. That text element that we have on the page currently says zero. So I'm gonna add another action here and this one's gonna be set text. So in the set text action, I'm gonna target the timer text element here and I'm gonna set the text to be, I need to open the expression editor and I'm gonna set the text to be count. So now it's going to display count every single time this timer fires. So it's going to be updating this value. So you can see on my phone, it's automatically counting up because we have auto start turned on. Now, if I double tap to reset it, you can see one, two, three, four, five. It's counting up every second and displaying the timer here. So that is how easy it is to use timer. Now we can also use start timer and stop timer actions to control a timer trigger. Let's see how that's done. So in the layers panel, I'm gonna unhide this button that I have. And on this button, I have a whole interaction here. Basically, it's gonna fire a haptic every time I tap it, but it's also going to check a condition. Basically, it's gonna check the state of this button. And if it's in the start state and I tap it, I wanna start the timer trigger. So I'm using this start timer action. And here I'm able to target the object that the timer I'm looking for is on. So in this case, the timer is on the timer box object on my page. And the timer I wanna use is actually just called timer. I could rename the timer and it will show up here as something else if I had multiple timers on my page that I wanted to be more specific with. Conversely, if my condition checks that we're actually in the stop state and I tap it, I'm gonna use that to stop the timer trigger. And again, I'll be able to target the object that the timer's on and the specific timer itself. So now, if I go back to this timer and I'm gonna turn off auto start, and on my phone, you can see, we basically loaded the page, the timer is not started, and I can use my button to start, timing, and to stop. And you can notice when I stop, that timer has stopped. And I can start again, and now it's gonna continue counting up, and I can stop again. And that's how easy it is to use timer in your designs.
This is a really basic example creating a stopwatch, but you can use timer to do a lot of cool things like cycling through a carousel. There's so many things you can do with timer. So I look forward to seeing what you create using these interactions. Thanks so much for watching.